Coming up this week on Let's Make It, we have a joystick control. Fun, fun, fun things to play with. All coming up right after this. The new way everyone is getting their cell service. No overage penalties, great rates, keep what you do not use, no contracts, and someone will actually pick up the phone when you need support. Use our link and get $25 off your first month's service or your new phone. Just go to tech-zen.tv slash ting to save $25. It's Tuesday night, and it's time for another Let's Make It. And this week, we're going to play with a new toy. Uh, I think I've had this for a week or two. I may even have mentioned it uh, in a previous show. I don't remember if I did or I did not, actually. Um, but uh, we're going to put the new toy. Now, this is Tuesday night, which is the time we've been recording Let's Make It. That may be changing in the near future, though. We may be moving to Monday nights. Tuesday nights are just not a great night for us. And there's a lot of other uh, tech shows on. We just don't want to crowd up everybody. So uh, we actually like to participate in some of those tech shows as well. So we may just be moving this show uh, to another night. Also, it works uh, better for, well, Humpwing works better uh, for our guest we've had on, Bob Powell, and hopefully he joins us again in the future. Um, and trying to move it to Monday nights, I think, that's where we're going to end up. So just kind of keep an eye on that. Uh, maybe as soon as next Monday. We may even change the time a little bit. We've had some requests about the time. 7 p.m. Eastern time is 4 p.m. Pacific time and people that want to get home to watch the show uh, and join us live, they said it'd be more likely to come and join us if it was a little bit later. So we may even move the time back just a little bit on Monday nights. Uh, so just keep an eye out on the website. We'll let you know uh, when that happens. And you can always get this on downloads. If you're, if you're getting this to a download normally, you're not going to have any difference. You may get it and you download a day early or a day earlier than you're used to, but that's it. All right, so this week I want to talk about this little joystick control. So uh, this is a two-direction joystick control plus a push button uh, control. It has uh, five pins. It has five volts ground. Uh, the response from the two potentiometers for two directions in the button pin. So let's go take a closer look at this. And this is it. And it's actually very cool. It's uh, very small. And... You can see that it's two dimensions, so you can go, you know, X and a Y direction, and there's a button. Now, you look at it on the, from the side, you see potentiometer on this side, and a potentiometer on this side. And if you go just a little bit farther, what do you see is the button that's getting pressed when you push it down. It's this little tactile button, and the rubber pushes down on it. Now, when it comes, it comes with a, a little bit more part. It comes like this. In fact, when I first got it, that was broken. So I realized that in the bag there was this top piece. And it only goes on one way. Let me see if I can figure out how it goes on. That was quick. The top is kind of rubberized, so it has a nice grip to it as well. So the first thing I'm going to show is how you read the inputs. And basically these are just straight potentiometers. So 0, uh, zero to 1,023. Let me put it back on the board here. Okay, I'll put it back on the board and let me uh, power up the Arduino. Okay, so actually, I may just give away my secret uh, that's coming up here in a little bit. Okay, so let's go look at some code. And uh, this is not very well commented yet, but I will comment this before I stick it onto the show notes page. Uh, we are going to come down and we're going to define our pins, sensor pin, uh, A0 and A1. We're going to use them for input from the X and Y. And we're going to use pin number two, digital pin number two, to read the button press. And we're not going to use it in this particular sketch, uh, but... Uh, we also have the LED pin 13, which is the typical LED that's on an Arduino board. And then we're going to store, we have our global variables for sensor values uh, for the determine, that are going to record what the, the value is of the input. We go through setup, and we're going to set our LED pin to be output, and our button pin to be the input. And in this example, I'm actually going to log all this to the serial port. So I'm going to be in my serial port at 9600 or 9600 baud. 
and then we're going to drop down into our loop. And all we're going to do in this loop is we're going to read both directions, sensor pin and sensor pin 2, and we're going to print out the x and the y values that we're bringing in. And actually, I don't even need this stuff anymore. That was my experimentation code. All right, and then we're just going to print a blank line, and we're going to wait a half second and do it all over again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and upload this to the Arduino. And it's uploaded. So let's go and we're going to look at the serial monitor. And you see it's already outputting the X and the Y value. And I'm going to pull the joystick up as an example. There is 987. I'm going to push the joystick down and you should see the X value change. Oh, there it goes down to 32, 4. So I'm pushing down the whole way. I'm going to take the joystick and go to the right. And you see the Y value now is 1022. And I can go to the left. And you see the Y value is down there. Nice. You bounce around a little bit. Come on, fingers probably shaking. I don't know. Maybe it's the way I'm holding on the board. Who knows? Um, it's a little bit all over the place. So uh, very simple. And actually, I'll go, go, go show you what I was doing uh, right here on the joystick. I was pushing up first, just like that. And then I was pushing down, just like that. And then pushing to the right. And then pushing to the left. And uh, I got a value of zero there going by. It's the first time I've seen it that low. So um, if you look at the coming back, so we're just constantly outputting what the input variables are off the joystick. So you may be wondering, what would you use the joystick for? Well, that's up to your creativity. However, I do have, uh, I have re resurrected a previous program and modified it just slightly. Uh, and we are actually going to, I'm going to show you what we're going to do actually before anything else. So let me go ahead and uh, bring it up. And you can probably tell already, you may have seen this in the other code because I didn't remove it all. Uh, we're going to need control servos. So uh, that's coming up. So before I do that, I do want to talk a little bit about our our sponsor. Now, I wasn't prepared for this, so this is totally off the cuff. Uh, and you've known for the last couple of weeks, we've been watching us. We have Ting as a sponsor up through May. And uh, Ting is a new, new type of phone company. Basically, they are an MVNA, which means they run on top of the Sprint network. They do not have their own network, but that is an advantage for you because they don't have to pay to maintain the network. They're just paying to use the network. Uh, the advantage of that is they can give you great prices, and they give you a lot of other things beyond just great prices. They uh, come from two cows, which you've ever heard of Hover. Hover has incredible customer support. I have a no hold policy, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Ting is now doing this exact same thing. Uh, so let's go real quickly and look through what Ting has to offer. They have great rates. For, I'm going to go through rates, so we'll just skip over that one. I wouldn't be doing the advertisement if those rates weren't, weren't just outstandingly and, and great. So uh, there's no overage penalties. If uh, you do go over your time uh, for the month, they don't give you a penalty. They just drop you up or jump you to the next tier just for that month. Next month, you go back to your normal tier. So every month of usage, some kind of emergency going on, family related, whatever, you're on the phone, no problem. Just for that month, they'll take it and jump it up to the next plan. They basically bill you at the beginning of the month, and they uh, will either give you a credit or charge you more depending on what you use with no no uh, charge for going over, no no fines for going over your amount, number of minutes. And you heard me right, they do give you a credit. So you get a light month, you say you pay for 500 minutes, and you only use 100 of the 500 minutes. They're going to drop you down to that tier and give you some money back. Multiple devices on one plan, this is like everywhere now. I mean, uh, like uh, Verizon has the family share plan. Uh, AT&T is something similar to that now. So you basically pay for the amount of minutes uh, and data that your family is going to use for the month. And each additional phone is only $6 per month. So you get one phone and you pay for the price and you think you can, can put another phone on six bucks. It's only six bucks more and you got another phone. It's great for that. Of course, it's great for small business. It's great for home. It's great for small business. It's great for everybody. No fees or limits on usage. They don't they don't stop your data from going through. They don't charge you extra for uh, going over the particular 
plan that you picked to start out with. To give you all kinds of free features, and the ones that get me are these two right here. Tethering and hotspotting are included, no additional charge, with Ting. That's something you don't see very often on the other carriers. No contract, you can come and go as you please. There's no two year contract, no two years just signing your life away. You just you want to add a new phone for a couple months because you got a family member visiting uh, from out of town. Uh, you can give them a phone for three months and drop the phone off and at the end and be done. Uh, because of that, and it's because it's only $6 a month for for an additional phone, you can use what they like to call strategically used devices. Uh, I just call it sensible. <laughs> um, they say that uh, your grandmother or your mother is uh, old-fashioned, doesn't like carrying around a cell phone, but you know, getting up there in the years, you just want to you want to make sure they have a way to get a contact with somebody if something would happen. Uh, they break down or something like that. So what you do is you, you get a phone, uh, $6 a month, and you put that phone in their glove box, teach them how to use it, obviously. And uh, it's all cost $6 a month. So there's no additional fee, and they just come out of your plan minutes. Uh, you can bring your own device. If you have a Sprint device, you can pretty much bring it over. Like I said, they run on the Sprint network, and they bring it right over. They have great devices you can buy, very Android-centric devices, too. If you are an Android, this is the place for you. I mentioned before about geek-powered support. Uh, you know, I hate when you call a support company, and they just got to put you on hold, go find somebody else, escalate you up, talk to the manager, all that stuff. You don't got to do that here at all. They are empowered. Geek Power Support. They know the products inside and out. None of this. I'm not sure how that works. Uh, you can tell they have been trained and they are empowered to solve your problem on the first call. They also have no hold customer support. I mentioned that before. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Monday through Friday, you will never be put on hold. In fact, when you call in, it'll ring until someone picks it up. When that person picks it up, will never put you on hold. I mentioned before they're Android. Very speak Android very very clearly. They uh, give you great graphs and uh, easy to read bills. So there's none of the confusing long page stuff. Uh, and again, you can cancel at any time. Let's do a real quick uh, look at some of the devices here. And uh, you can see all kinds of smartphones. And you actually can buy used phones as well if you want from Ting. And uh, Samsung Galaxy phones. Here's the S3. Here's the S4. The brand new phone that just came out is already on Ting. So you buy this device and it's yours too. There's no no question. There's the Note, very popular phablet type phone, and it's uh, the Galaxy Note. And uh, Apple's coming soon. They also have a standard feature phone. This is what you'd get your your mother or your grandmother to leave in a glove box, nothing fancy. Uh, and then they have additional, so you want to make your home phone over cellular and get rid of the landline, you can truly do that still using your home physical phones. So if you're used to using the, the wireless phone in your home, you don't want to really get rid of that, but you don't want to use the landline either. Get a Sprint Home Phone Connect, and you can uh, use your minutes from Ting as your home phone as well. And if you have a little bit of uh, coverage issues, you can get the Sprint Airwave, and it works along with uh, Ting as well, and it just boosts the signal around. So here is the favorite part for me, their plans. This is just an amazing thing. So let's say you have uh, you and your wife on your plan and you don't go over 500 minutes a month between the two of you uh, and you don't really use much more than a gigabyte per month of data and well, let's say you between the two yourselves you don't text. So uh, with two phones at $6 a piece, your total bill would be $45 for the month for 500 minutes zero text messages, and one gigabyte of data. So it comes along that your child is now going to school and all the friends have a phone, and they want to start getting a phone. So you're going to add another phone to this plan, and of course they want to text. So let's say they want to do 1,000 texts uh, a month. So we do 1,000. So those 1,000 texts and the additional phone, you're still only paying $56 for three phones. So yeah, you can come in here to Ting and you can you can try out all different types of combinations of things. And like I said before, if uh, you buy this 500 minute plan and this month you don't use more than 100 minutes, they're going to give you a $6 rebate on your next bill because you didn't uh, use your 500 minutes. And let's say you do go over your 500 minutes, but you didn't go over your up to 1,000 minutes. So they're going to charge you no $9. That's it. No, no fee, no late fee, not the slap on the wrist fee, nothing like that. That's all there is to it. Now, 
Something that Ting has done for us and our listeners is they are allowing us to give you, oops, if I can type in the link right, it's tech-zen.tv slash Ting, and they are going to give you $25 off uh, your Ting service or your first device or your device. So you can apply this discount, and it's like us giving you $25 to go try out Ting. And uh, we appreciate them supporting the show and uh, allowing us to give you a great discount on their service. All right, so let's get back to our servo example. And we already had the same program from before, the sensor pins, uh, A1 and A, A0 and A1, the button pin, and the LED pin, which I'm not sure I even have in this program anymore to demonstrate the button, but we have our sensor values. And then we have our servo pins. This is something that's new from the other program. And you see we have two servos, and um, I'm going to actually show you a little bit of that. I kind of kept them out of the field of view for the first time, so you didn't know we had them, but they got a little noisy on me. So there's the two servos right there, and we'll come back to that shortly. All right, so here's server pins 9 and 10. And I have, if you watch the server episode, which I believe is episode 9, we do put a max value just so we don't hurt the servo. Um, my servos typically, I don't know about these, these are different types. These are uh, new servos compared to what I used in that show. Uh, their maximum may actually be greater than 175. I don't know how to check. And the minimum of 2 instead of going to 0 just to protect the servo a little bit because it'll keep trying. And then our maximum pot value. So we're, since we're reading in an... Um, an analog pin, it's between 0 and uh, 1023. So we're setting that max value, and you'll see why we set this up a little bit later. So we go through our setup, just like we did before. We set up our LED pin and our button pin, and we attach our servos to the right servo pins. We come down, and we then read the input, just like we did before. And now we're going to write to the first servo the sensor value, first sensor value, and you see this command we never used before in the show, and it's called map. And when I originally did this, I actually, I, I wrote it out in code before I realized that it was a map command. Basically what map command does is it takes the input value and it says in the, this, basically a map, two different input levels separately. So in the case of the max pot value, it's between 0 and 1,023. In the case of the servo, it's between 2 and 175. So if your servo value is coming in, uh, let's say 512, which is 50%, it's going to take 50% of uh, 125, which is, uh, I can't do it in my head, 62 and a half. And it's going to return 62 and a half, well, 60 to 63 in this case, because it's going to round it up back to this servo right. So basically we're taking two different ranges and taking a value from the first range and making it equal to what it would be in the value of the second range. So, um, and we do that with the other one as well. And then, oh, I do have a button here. So if I press the button, the uh, LED light should come on as well. And I'm only waiting 25 milliseconds this time because I'm not putting anything to the screen. There's no reason to wait, and it just makes it feel a little bit more responsive. I could probably even load that maybe a little bit more even. So let me go ahead and upload this to the Arduino. All right, it's uploaded. And let me just make sure. Oh, you hear it's working. So let's go back over to this now. Up and down. This is going to be up and down. Let me see if I can find somewhere to put this so it's visible. Put that up there. So I'm going to go up. You see that servo moving as I go up and as I go down. You see it goes the other way. It's just hard to move with this little board. All right, so I'm going to go to the right. I'm going to try to go to the right. There's the right. And there is the left. So you see from this little board, I'm going to hold the board like this, I now have one servo going one direction and one servo going the other direction, just like that. And I can go just a little bit and keep going as far as I want.
Just like that. And the same thing goes with up and down. That's down. And back up again. It's a very neat little uh, little joystick control. Um, I didn't really go through the Arduino itself. I can get it over here, maybe. There's not much to it, really. Uh, we have our uh, five volts in the ground right here. And then our servos, which are attached from these pins, these plugs right here. You see the uh, the green and the blue. I'm sorry, the... Uh, what is it? Blue and blue. Is it blue and blue? But here's two blues. These are actually going to the potentiometer right here. Let's pull that one out, probably. Did I? No? Okay. The blues are, two blues are going to the potentiometers that are on here. They're going to A0 and A1 right there. And the only other thing that we have is uh, coming over from the servos, you see the blue wires that are going to servos up here, and they are pins 9 and 10. And the other thing you see is this yellow wire, and it is the pin 2, which is going to the button that when I press like that, you see the light turn on. So that's a really, it's pretty simple, and it's not much code either. It's one of the nice things about the Arduino. It's so easy to do servo stuff compared to other, to other things. Um, this example code will be up on the show pages at tech-zen.tv and you can go to let's make it or you can just go to let's make it.tv and take you right to the, the show page uh, i'll have links to uh the joystick control out there as well so if you're interested in getting one and playing with it uh, it's uh, really easy to find that way <laughs> uh, but it is, a, it is a very neat uh neat thing this week's show is a very quick one we have planned out shows uh let me see how long i've planned them out for now We sat down and planned out shows. Uh, that way we knew what to kind of work on ahead of time. And especially if we're going to get uh, Bob a little more involved, he'll know what's coming up. And I just want to make sure that we're uh, ahead of things. Let's see where, let's, let's make it. We have shows planned out through August 20th. So not recorded yet. We're going to record them every week like we do now. But uh, we have the segments planned out we want to do each week up to August 20th. And that could change a little bit based on uh, your suggestions of things you want to see. So these are things we're going to do if we don't hear anything from anybody. But hopefully I would really like to have you uh, tell me what you want us to do because that's, that's the show is for you. Um, I have fun doing it, obviously, but or else I, I wouldn't be doing this. But I want to do what you want us to do. So if you have an idea for a show, just drop us a note. You can send an email to let's make it at tech-zen.tv. If you go to the show page, you can find all kinds of ways to contact us. You can leave us a voicemail. Uh, you can tweet us, whatever. There's tons of ways you can do it uh, to get in contact with us. But uh, we love hearing from you. I'm getting more and more emails every week. Uh, I think I've gotten just two just today. As a matter of fact, that I haven't even responded to. Um, I am a little bit slow getting back to you, so please be patient <laughs> because I'm uh, just getting really busy. And uh, sometimes the answers aren't just a simple, simple yes or no. It's, it takes a little bit more in depth to respond or a little research sometimes as well. If you have made something you'd like to show, uh, I'd love to show what you have made on this show. Record the video on YouTube or Vimeo or somewhere similar to that. Upload it. Just send me a link to it. Don't send me the video because it's too big. Uh, I don't open videos from people I don't know anyways. Like, you should never open attachments from people you don't know. But if you send me a link to, like, YouTube or Vimeo, I'll go out and watch it. And you may even see it on this show. Uh, actually, you probably will probably will see it on the show. Let's put it that way. Uh, so definitely, you know, let us know what you've made with your Arduino or your Raspberry Pi or any the kind of uh, small CPU. We'd love to, to display your work on our show. Uh, I'd love, love to do that. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this week. Uh, like I said before, you can get us on all kinds of places. Anywhere you can get podcasts, iTunes, or any kind of podcast directory. We have a Roku app now. You can go out and download If you're Roku, go look for techzen.tv. We're probably still in the new channels area. Uh, we've only been out for a little over two weeks now. And uh, if you get us on iTunes, you know, you can. that's the active, That's one of the better ways to get us on the sort of iTunes, but the automatic podcast download. Uh, iTunes is just one of them. 
Uh, but if you are getting us from iTunes, if you can come out and go out and give us a rating, like five stars, would be really nice. Uh, and uh, give us a little comment. That's definitely appreciated. It helps us get found, get in the rankings and things like that as well. If you're watching us on YouTube, which is perfectly fine, uh, you can uh, give us a little thumbs up right down at the bottom. Uh, and you can uh, comment down there as well. And there's also a share button. Share us with your friends. You got other friends that like to play with electronics too. I know you do. Everybody does. You know, just share it with us. Share it with them. Get us more people. You know, that's how we grow. And we love to we love the fact that we are growing like we are. But it's because of you we're growing, and we want to keep growing uh, to get more people involved in electronics and the fun behind it as well. I think I mentioned before about a new show coming out. Uh, I just recorded the first episode, kind of like the pilot, to see how I like the flow of it. Uh, and it's called The Program, and it's going to go through different programming languages. I recorded the what I think I'm going to make the first episode, uh, which is actually just the basics of programming, how computers work. Because I think I have a strong belief that if you understand how the computer is working underneath, you're going to be able to program in any language. Uh, just a little bit of difference in syntax and a little bit of understanding. So that's why I want to go through some uh, programming basics or computer basics, I'm going to call it, not programming, because it talks about memory and stuff like that. Uh, so that's coming out very soon. If you're interested in computer programming, uh, we're going to start with Python, which is actually a fairly new language to me. Uh, I've only been doing it for maybe a year or a little bit more than a year uh, proficiently. I've, I've dabbled in it for a couple of years, but uh, last, in the last year I've really gotten to use it a lot. And uh, it's a great language. And then we're going to go spread out uh, to other languages. And I'm trying to find other hosts that are better at the languages than what I am. Uh, I have some friends that do some of these languages, and I'm going to ask them if they'd be willing to do like uh, 12 hours of training, basically. Uh, of course, it's asking a lot for somebody to go up 12 hours of their, their time and to train people, especially if you're not comfortable being in front of a camera and stuff like that as well. Although most of the time you're not in front of the camera because you're on the computer screen, but uh, that's a whole whole different thing. All right, that is it for this week. And uh, again, I want to thank our sponsor, Ting, uh, for sponsoring our show, at least up through the end of May. It's been nice having them here. Nice, comfy feeling of them being with us during our show. That's it for Let's Make It This Week. Uh, be sure to check the website for next week and see what day and time for sure it is. We'll make sure it's updated as soon as we have a set schedule. We'll see you all next week. For show notes for this show, contacts, and more, go to the TechZen.tv website where you can get show notes for all of our shows. We love to hear from our viewers and listeners. We have an email, a Twitter, and a phone number where you can contact us for each show. For details, visit the TechZen.tv website and get the show details. You can also make a video and upload it somewhere like YouTube or Vimeo and then just send us a link. You never know, you may see your video in a future show. You can get all of our shows delivered automatically to your favorite device by going to your favorite podcast website like iTunes and subscribing. Each of our shows also has a YouTube channel you can subscribe to to get regular updates. Our shows are also available on most internet radio networks like Stitcher and TuneIn Radio. You can also watch and listen to our shows on Xbox, TiVo, and Roku. You can even find us on your Zoom.